Hello and welcome back. In this video, I want to begin discussing a new topic, and that is the relationship between impulse and momentum. And impulse and momentum are very similar to the previous two topics we discussed, that being work and energy. So before we talked about work, and work was something that described a force being exerted on a system. And kinetic energy was what we used to describe the effect that doing work has on a system. In a similar way, in this video, we will introduce the concept of impulse. An impulse is something that's going to describe a force that is being exerted on an object. Then we'll introduce momentum, and we will use momentum to describe the effect that an impulse has on a system. Similarly, we will come up with a conservation law. So when we talked about work and energy, we found conservation of energy. When we talk about impulse and momentum, we'll come up with a conservation of momentum law. So before I describe what an impulse is, I'd, first to, I'd like to first explain why it is that we use impulses. So there are lots of examples where forces that are being exerted on an object are very difficult to describe. So I have two examples here. So for example, if you jump up into the air, the, the force that the floor exerts on your feet when you land is a very difficult to describe force. Similarly, if you're playing baseball and you hit the ball with a bat, the force that the bat exerts on the ball is also a very complicated force. So instead of trying to describe these forces, what we'd like to do is try to describe the effects that these forces have on the objects. So we'd like to describe the effect that the bat has on hitting the ball instead of worrying about the forces that are involved. So to do this, we introduce the impulse. And the average impulse is defined as being equal to the average force that is exerted over some time delta t times the time delta t. So like I said, I want to be able to describe the effect that this impulse has. So the average impulse, and technically this is a vector, is equal to the average force that is exerted times the amount of time over which that force is exerted. And if I use Newton's second law, the average force is equal to mass times average acceleration. And we know that the average acceleration times delta t is equal to the change in velocity. Technically, again, all these things are vectors. So if I plug in delta v for acceleration times delta t, I see that the average impulse is equal to mass times the change in velocity. So this is the effect that an impulse has. The average impulse is going to be equal to mass times the change in the velocity. And we call mass times velocity the momentum. So what this means is that the average impulse that is exerted on an object is equal to the change in momentum, because momentum is mass times velocity. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. The first example says, a space probe has an initial momentum of 7.5 times 10 to the 7 kilogram meters per second. Rockets create a force of 2 times 10 to the 6 newton force for 12 seconds. And the question asks us to find the final momentum of the probe. So all we have to do is use the impulse momentum theorem. So the impulse momentum theorem tells us that the average uh, impulse is equal to the change in momentum. And change in momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum. So rewriting this to solve for the final momentum, we see the final momentum is equal to the average impulse plus the initial momentum. And since I wasn't given the impulse, but I was given force, and I was given the time over which the force was exerted, I don't have that written down up here, but delta t was 12 seconds, I can just go back to the definition for impulse. So this is equal to force, or average force, times delta t. So this is the impulse that was exerted plus the initial momentum. Now, since I know the force that was exerted, and I know delta t, I can plug those in. So we have 2 times 10 to the 6 newtons times 12 seconds plus the initial momentum. 
And if we plug all this into a calculator, we see that the final momentum of our system is going to be equal to 9.9 .9 times 10 to the seventh kilogram meters per second. So let's go ahead and look at another example. In this example, it says a dump truck is being filled with sand at a rate of 55 kilograms per second. The sand falls from rest two meters into the bed of the truck. How much does the normal force exceed the actual weight of the truck? So let me go ahead and just show a picture of what's going on here. So what we have is we have sand that is coming down this trough and it's going to start from rest and then fall two meters into the bed of the truck. So when the sand initially hits the truck, it's going to be moving with some velocity in the downward direction. But then the bed of the truck is going to exert a force upward on the sand to bring the sand to rest. So because the truck is exerting an upward force on the sand, from Newton's third law, we know that the, the sand is then going to be pushing a force downward on the truck. So this is why the uh, normal force that is pushing upwards on the truck is actually going to be even greater than the force due to gravity because the sand is going to be pushing down on the truck and that's going to add to its weight. So the trick is to figure out basically what that force is that the sand is exerting on the truck. Or another way to do this is to figure out the force the truck is exerting on the sand. In fact, the latter of those two would be the easier way to do this. So obviously we're going to be using the impulse momentum theorem. So we're going to calculate the force that the truck exerts on the sand by using uh, the impulse momentum theorem. So the impulse momentum theorem tells us that the average impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So since I'm looking for force, I need to go back to the definition of impulse. The average impulse is equal to the average force times the time over which the force is exerted. And again, this has to equal the change in momentum. So from this, we can see that the average force is equal to the rate that the momentum changes. So in other words, the force that the sand exerts on the truck is equal to the rate that the momentum of the sand is changing with respect to time. So what we need to do is figure out this, delta momentum over delta t. So obviously, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So the change in momentum is going to be equal to mass times final velocity minus initial velocity. And this is the change in the velocity of the sand when the sand hits the bed of the truck and comes to rest. So obviously the final velocity of the sand will be zero meters per second because the sand comes to rest on the bed of the truck. But now we have to figure out what that initial velocity of the sand is when the sand hits the bed of the truck. So the way we, use, the way we calculate this is by using kinematics. So remember that uh, <clears throat> the way we find the velocity of an object after it falls a known distance is by using this kinematic formula here. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2G delta Y. Right, we use this formula because we know delta y is 2 meters, that's how far the sand falls, and we don't know anything about the amount of time that the sand is accelerating. Now, the sand starts out at rest when it's leaving the trough, so for this case, this initial velocity is zero. So the final velocity is, uh, this is a little bit strange, my final velocity here is the initial velocity for the second step, so the, the final velocity during the falling stage is the velocity of the sand when it hits the truck, and here the final velocity is the velocity of the sand after it comes to rest on the bed of the truck. But if I solve for this velocity, I see that it's equal to the square root of 2g times delta y. And if I plug this into a calculator, I see that this is equal to 6.26 meters per second. So going back to the impulse momentum theorem, we found that the average force is equal to the rate that the momentum is changing with respect to time. And in this case, the rate that momentum changes with respect to time is going to be equal to the rate that mass is falling into the truck times the change in the velocity of the sand when it hits the truck. 
And we know the rate that mass is falling into the truck. That's 55 kilograms per second. So this number here is 55 kilograms per second. And then we multiply this by the change in its velocity. And that's equal to 6.26 .6 meters per second. So plugging all this into a calculator, we see that the uh, force that the sand exerts on the truck is equal to 344 newtons. So at this point, I think I'd like to end this video. And in the next video, I we're going to begin talking about conservation of momentum.